this is what we are seeing now with Bros. So Bros completely imploded. So there was huge press for this movie. Billy Eichner, who frankly I'd never heard of. I guess he was on Girls, which again is a show that I really didn't watch because I'm a straight man. Billy Eichner, he, um, he, he made a movie called Bros. It is supposed to be a groundbreaking rom-com. And it was a, I mean, we are talking a dud. This thing had a $22 million budget. It had a $30 million marketing budget. $30 million. Okay, so that is $52 million combined on this film, just for the marketing and the production. And we're not talking about like overseas. We're talking about just domestically. $52 million. It's opening weekend, $5.4 million. I'm sorry, wrong. $4.8 million. For less than $5 million on 3,350 screens. $4.8 million on 3,350 screens. So I calculated this yesterday, but I'm just going to do it again for those who missed it, okay? That means that per screen, per screen average, $1,432. $1,432. Okay, so let's assume an average ticket price, let, let's go like $12. We'll go low. Average ticket price of $12. Okay, that means that each theater sold, not for one show, for the entire weekend, for the entire weekend, which presumably you're talking like, at a minimum, you're talking Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You're talking a minimum of probably seven to eight shows a theater. 119 tickets per theater for seven, for seven to eight shows. Okay, so just to chart that out for you, let's assume that there were not even that many. Let's assume there were six shows a weekend, okay, which is really low. That means there were 20 people in each theater. 20. Okay, that, that would be a high-end estimate of the number of people who showed up per theater to this movie. That is a massive dud, a huge dud. Okay, so the reason this is a big story is because, number one, Billy Eichner had made a big deal out of all this. Like, he went on national TV and he said to demonstrate that, that this is a tolerant, diverse country, you need to come see the movie. And then he did an entire thread about how angry he was that people had not seen his movie, right? He was, he was really pissed that people didn't see his movie. So why don't we begin with why people didn't actually see bros? Okay, so first of all, I just want to play you a little bit of the trailer. And you tell me whether this is a movie that you wish to see if you are not a gay man, right? Which is like, I assume that many gay men saw this movie, that out of the 20 people in the theater, a significant portion of them were gay men. Because I cannot imagine a huge number of other people wanted, I mean, I don't have to imagine it. I know the box office numbers. No one else saw this movie. So here is a little bit of the trailer. Hey guys, it's Bobby Lieber coming to you from the future home of the LGBTQ plus museum. Everyone is really excited and totally getting along. This happens to be Bisexual Awareness Week, and no one has acknowledged it! Lesbian History Month was in March! Nobody said a goddamn thing! Of course, lesbians get a month and we get a week. So what's happening? Didn't you guys have an announcement? This is a little unexpected, but we are in a throuple situation. Yeah. You're in a throuple? Um, does that seem like a thing that you'd like to see? Does that, like, I didn't even play you the whole trailer. I just played you, like, a little bit of it. Is that is that something that you are desperate to see? Are you, like, rushing out to see that right now? So um, I can give you a few reasons why people did not see this movie. One, what was the, I just want to know what the elevator pitch for this movie was. Seriously, what was the elevator pitch where they're, like, people are going to be dying to see this rom-com. I'm just going to read you a few details. I will fully admit, I have not seen the movie. I have no intention of seeing the movie, just like apparently every other human being in the United States, with the exception of Billy Eichner's immediate friend circle. So I'm just going to read you a review from somebody who has seen the movie because Kyle Smith apparently was forced to see the movie for the Wall Street Journal because he gets paid to actually review these things. So here is what he writes about the film. He says, Mr. Eichner, who stars as Bobby, a New York podcaster who is starting what he calls the first LGBT plus history museum, has a lot of thoughts to get off his chest, most of them dyspeptic, about both gay life and perceptions of it. Near the start of the movie, Bobby says that the catchphrase love is love is a lie, that gay people were forced to deploy it in order to win equal treatment. In reality, he contends, gay sex and relationships differ greatly from heterosexual norms. Mr. Eichner then sets out to prove that thesis. But by the way, I think that he's actually correct about this, right? I think Dan Savage has said this, right? That pretending that gay relationships are like male, female, straight, monogamous relationships as a typical matter is not true. Okay, so him proving that, that the problem is not, pe people don't generally want to watch that. It, it happens to be the case that the best way to sell a monogamous gay relationship is as the same as a male-female relationship in nearly all respects except one of the persons is, is of the same sex as the other person. But when you kind of turn over that, that, that rock and it turns out that Billy Eigner's sex life is like gay orgies, and that's what everybody was fighting for, that people are like, ah. okay, so, but it turns out that's what the movie is. Quote, 
The culture of gay men, as Mr. Eichner and Mr. Stoller depict it, is one in which wild dance parties, drugs, and the availability of random internet hookups forestall emotional bonds. Bobby prides himself on never seeking any kind of lasting attachment to any of the men he sleeps with. So does the guy who catches his eye at a rave, the mild-mannered lawyer Aaron, a genial Luke McFarlane. As loud, pushy, neurotic as Bobby is, Aaron is cool, confident, and poised. Someone dubs him the gay Tom Brady. The two men consider the pursuit of love to be taboo, and even see the word dating as off-putting, implying exclusivity. To clarify to each other that lust is all that is being indulged, the pair's first bedroom encounter involves two other men also. And the movie expends lots of imagination on similarly ribald sex jokes. So um, you're not just going to watch two dudes in a rom-com. You're going to watch a bunch of dudes nailing each other. That's, that, that was the pitch. That was the elevator pitch right here. Also, apparently th- this, this movie contains discussions about whether Abraham Lincoln was gay. No. Also, there, there, there are significant conversations, apparently, with a second grade teacher about why small children need to learn gay culture. Quote, because in his view, such instruction must begin as soon as possible, lest gay people be marginalized. Why wouldn't anyone want to see this film? I can't imagine. It must be bigotry. There's no other reason. Also, by the way, what is the pitch of the film? Okay, what exactly are the stakes of the film? So typically speaking, when you are uh, when you are doing a rom-com, the stakes of the film are, are the people going to get together forever, right? Is it happily ever after? Do they get married or not? Do they get married and do they have kids? Right? This is the unspoken stakes of every rom-com ever is will the male and female fall in love and then form a family? Because it turns out all of society rests on the formation of male-female family units and pair bonding and the creation of children and raising of them. That's the stakes of rom-coms, which is why rom-coms typically feature young, marriageable age and childbearing age people. There are a few rom-coms like really old people, but those are not the ones that most rom-coms are about, right? Most rom-coms are like Sandy Bullock at the age of 30 and Bill Pullman at the age of 32 and they're, and they're falling in love, right? That, that's what most rom-coms are. Why? Because all of human society rests on this. What are the stakes of this movie? Quote, the payoff joke is that they might possibly be ready to commit to three months of more or less exclusive dating. Wow, high stakes there for the rom-com. Will they only bang each other? Or will they bang each other plus other people? And for how long? So I wonder, I mean, so again, elevator pitch was gay dudes having a lot of promiscuous sex. Maybe they'll do it with not other gay dudes, but just with each other for like a few months. Also, just to note here, rom-coms, straight men don't like them. Straight men have to be dragged to rom-coms by their girlfriends or wives. There There are zero straight men in the history of humanity who have ever been on like a Friday night, man, there's a new Creed movie out. There, there's, an, there's a new Predator movie out. Also, there is a brand new rom-com starring Kate Blanchett. Let's go, wh- what's the choice, guys? I don't know. I don't know. You know, Jennifer Lopez is out in Made in Manhattan, or theoretically, we could watch Terminator. Like what? There's never been a straight dude ever who's been like, oh, let's watch. Okay, so you're starting off with, if you're going to do a rom-com, the chief audience you're seeking is women, right? Women are the ones who you're seeking. It turns out that, you know what women really like watching about rom-coms? You know what they like about romances? Women in them. It turns out that, that I know that failing the Bechdel test is actually not a, it's not a, a good strategy for bringing in audiences to the rom-com, right? Rom-com is a female-centric category. And so women want to see, women typically fall in love with men. I know this is like groundbreaking stuff right here. And we're not allowed to say it. We're supposed to pretend that like women will just go to a lesbian drama. I'm sorry, as a general rule, no. Women want to see women fall in love with men in a rom-com. That is what, since Pride and Prejudice, this has been the case. So the pitch was, what if we do a rom-com, which dudes don't want to see? So, and also women won't want to see it because it's two dudes banging each other. That, that, that'll, be the, that'll be the pitch. That's the elevator pitch. So you know how that elevator pitch gets greenlit? Because it's so important, guys. It's so important. That's why it gets greenlit. Because it's so darned important. And then when it fails, predictably, because the trailer looks bad, because the topic is not something that is wildly interesting to either straight men or women, generally, lesbian or straight, the, and then it dies on the butt. The answer is because you're a bigot. Because you're a bigot. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all our future content.